it's interesting because I, I suppose I haven't really thought that much about the term, but I feel almost like statistics are data once it's been interpreted, or that's the way that it's co often kind of used. So for me, data is just this big set of what we call raw numbers. So it's kind of uninterpreted. This is just everything we found. Yeah. Um, and hopefully as kind of like as detailed as possible. So rather than being aggregated for, say, an age group 18 to 24 year olds, we want to see 18 year olds, 19 year olds, 20 year olds, yeah, and so yeah. on. Um, and for me, a statistic is something that's kind of, I don't know, say 25% of 18 year olds um, drink coffee once a day or something. It, that, that's a statistic, that's the kind of interpreted data. And that's how I see it as slightly different. So I think statistics is probably the art of interpreting the data. People may assume that um, that we kind of take an Excel spreadsheet, look at it, kind of look for a really big, exciting number or a really small, exciting number and kind of write something up. But actually what we do is far more than that. So we have to build interactive platforms if perhaps words aren't the best way to communicate the information so that people can kind of look at the look at the data set for themselves and explore it by kind of clicking on a specific area or clicking on a specific year. Um, we're also responsible for kind of flat graphics and charts. So we often work with the newspaper site, the newspaper section so like uh, offering them advice on how to lay things out in print which is really really important as well um knowing how to use photoshop statistical systems all different kinds of software and html coding is really really important for what we do and i think that's another trend in the workplace where just having one set of skills is not enough mm. not at all i it's for me it's it's as incomprehensible to say that statistics are boring as to say that words are boring they're only they always represent something and they always represent some subject matter so if you find the statistics boring it's because you're not applying them to an interesting subject take anything you're interested about whether it's art or fashion or food or economics and apply the statistics and all of a sudden statistics become interesting so to say that statistics are inherently uninteresting does, just doesn't make sense to me they're a language so how can they how can they possibly be uninteresting? I suppose I would say a couple of things about the value of learning statistics at university. One is that um, it allows you to challenge yourself in kind of a different way because you can kind of read up on other theories and, and test your theoretical assumptions. But when you're collecting data, sometimes the numbers really do scream out at you that you're just plain wrong, which is a really, really important skill to be able to have. Um, it's really, really applicable in so many roles now. I'm just seeing in, and not just the kind of, con not just the expected shift in, um, I don't know, say finance, I'm expecting more and more kind of statistical literacy, mm -hmm. but in really unexpected fields. So 10 years ago, people would not have said that journalism was a profession where you really need a statistical understanding, and that's increasingly the case. Think tanks just as much, um, PR increasingly, because obviously it's tied to journalism, and if you can demonstrate this statistical understanding, there's a belief that you're gonna have more impact in kind of promoting a brand, literally absolutely everything. Um, so it's very important in terms of employment prospects and also um, uh, remuneration for, for, for jobs as well. It will definitely boost um, expected salaries. I think back then, actually, there wasn't so much of an emphasis of having those demonstrable skills. And there was a bit of an assumption as well that if you're young and if you're not kind of frightened of, of things like Excel, if you demonstrate that kind of willingness to use it, mm. you'll kind of work out along the way. Mm. Whereas I think much n much more now, they're going to need you to show that you actually know how to use those skills. And whether it's kind of showing it academically or showing it from a pr past role, but increasingly those past roles will require those academic yeah. credentials to be able to, to prove that you've learned those skills. Um, so for me, actually, all of my all of my statistical understanding has been very much on the job, and which I think is a massive shame because I think, I think obviously um, statistical interpretation has a theoretical underpinning. I'm just not particularly conscious of what that theoretical underpinning is for me because I haven't had the space to kind of reflect on different methods, um, and so that's actually I think that's a massive drawback. But yeah, so I kind of basically learnt on the job. So I did some work with a think tank, um, which I found really, really interesting. Mm. They would bring together focus groups and discuss a certain idea, and the focus groups would often kind of reinforce reinforce what that initial mm. assumption was or would tease out new aspects of it. Um, but fundamentally, things didn't really change too much because they weren't really using that much primary data. So I worked there for a little bit, which again reinforced this, this idea that I really needed to build up my statistical knowledge. Um, and then... After I think the role that I took after that was with the International Organisation for Migration doing monitoring and evaluation work. 
after my master's, I went into consultancy work, so security consultancy, which was all about kind of conflict assessment and understanding risk and stuff. Basically, my, my kind of background in NGO and consultancy work m made me more aware of the importance of infographics and this kind of growing trend to visualise information in a way that's really, really effective and kind of this trend of believing it's quite direct and quite powerful. And so I did a one day course in data visualisation at the Frontline Club in London, which is a really fantastic kind of club um, for journalists, but also for people who have interest in areas that kind of relate to journalism. And I did that um, in 2011, and the course instructor was the data editor at The Guardian. So I basically stayed in touch with him, and then through a kind of series of events, ended up working at The Guardian um, as a data journalist, which is where I've been for the past year. Increasingly, actually, journalists are becoming more and more aware of some of this more, some of these more kind of like advanced social science methods, which is a which is a real opportunity actually for greater, for greater dialogue between the two professions, and I think that that dialogue is going to be enormously beneficial both to journalists who can kind of enhance their skills in understanding, and for academics who really need to, you know, what am I saying, enhance their skills in explaining. It shows that actually statistics reach into every single aspect of our life and it's not just about kind of high-minded policy all the time and that's why as well it's so it's so relevant to the social sciences because people go off into so many different sectors that aren't necessarily about policy and those statistics are relevant to every single possible destination as, as far as I'm concerned mm. I can't see an area where it's not relevant we obviously as journalists we're quite conscious of the need for transparency in what we do as well so as soon as you start to perform too many kind of statistical functions on stuff that original data set loses some of its value because mm. a you can't say it came from this source and kind of clearly credit it because your influence in how you arrived at that final point is kind of a lot more opaque and b we need to explain to readers what it is that we've done to it so it's far more easier to say um you know we looked at males in this group of this of uh, this specific age group say than to say we extrapolated from here and then compared it to this particular mm. area like readers might not necessarily have the tools to be able to to question that and it's really important that they question every single step that we've done. The thing that's really nice about data is it's so collaborative and actually a lot of other research methods aren't particularly like that. So for example when I post an article I will also publish the data that I use to reach those conclusions and people have the opportunity to look at that data and to say whether it was flawed, what's missing from it, what needs updating, um, other sources that might kind of produce a different angle or perhaps a different yeah. argument entirely. Yeah. And that's really valuable because it means that when I go back to the same article, I might draw on all of those on all of those things. And you can actually produce literally, you know, crowdsource data sets mm. as well, which is really, really fascinating. And I've gone to quite a few what's called hack days now, which is just basically a group of people coming together, kind of statisticians, website developers, all trying to address a problem. And their kind of shared common language is often just data. So there'll be one group of people that are kind of analysing the data, another side that may be kind of doing more of the theory of it, one set that will work on the visualisation. And that's really exciting exciting because actually you need to have um, you need to have a broader range of skills and being able to work in that kind of multidisciplinary environment is really really fantastic I'm moving to 538 in America in a couple of weeks time and that was a blog that was started by um, a data analyst called Nate Silver a while ago and he kind of shifted from analyzing sports statistics to analyzing political statistics and now we'll be doing virtually everything, understanding all kinds of different trends, but from a statistical perspective, from a data-driven perspective. Um, and it will be the biggest data-driven newsroom in the entire world, which is really, really exciting to be a part of.